Just hold a second, please. Uh, let me see. Here we go. Sir, okay. Yes, yes, yes. Takayaku, sir. Okay. Can you audible, so, sir? Thank you. Okay. I'm ready. Proceed. Yep. Proceed. Okay. Uh, good morning, everyone. Thank you for having me uh, for this wonderful session. My name is um, Dr. Tsutsumi from Osaka, Japan. Um, I have a privilege to talk about the primary health care in Japan, um, challenge of super aged society, social distance, and poverty. So before starting the presentation, um, I have no conflict of interest related to this presentation. So um, this is today's agenda. I would briefly want to introduce what is Japan is and Japanese medicine is, and I will briefly talk about the COVID infection which have um, brought us to Japan, and then primary health care in Japan would be introduced, and the imminent issues, including the three topics I've mentioned, would be also discussed. And I'm going to make some um, suggestion to my country how to improve the primary care system. Um, so let's get started. So this is uh, my country, Japan. Um, it is a very unique country uh, in terms of culture, food, and nationality. So if any of you haven't visited my, my country yet, please consider. So this is the introduction of Japan. Um, so it is an island country located in East Asia. The capital is Tokyo, but Osaka also is a very famous city. And population is a 126 million people and 98.5% are actually Japanese, which means um, in terms of diversity of ethnicity, it's really, really low. Uh, Japan itself is very famous for the national health insurance system and super age society, which I would discuss later. And the healthcare cost is 44 trillion yen. Um, the 11.0% of the GDP is used for healthcare. And more than half of the cost is used for the elderly, which I think is also happening in the other countries in the world. So we have Mount Fuji, we have Osaka Castle, Kyoto is a very beautiful city, um, Tokyo is very fancy, famous for tempura and sashimi sushi. And overall, we're going to have an exposition in 2025 in my city, Osaka, so please visit. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the topic of my country, Super Age Society Japan. So um, maybe all of you may know, but a lot of people in Japan live very long. Average life expectancy is um, 81.6 in male, uh, which is ranked as seventh in, among the world, and 87.7 year old um, in female, which is ranked as second. And when combined together, it's gonna be 84.7, which is also ranked as second in all among the world. So uh, people are re living very, very long. And then the number of ages keep on rising um, since 1950. So at uh, 1950, the life expectancy was around 60 to 65, but it was keep on rising and never had a, a uh, never dropped um, over these 50 years. So uh, this is, uh, of course, COVID-19 virus, uh, which have brought a very big problem, not only in the country, but also all over the world. Uh, it suffered a lot of people. A lot of people have resulted in uh, severe comorbidities and even death. But uh, when we look at the number of a COVID-19 death per million, I really don't know the exact reason why, but Japan remained to be having a very low number of deaths per million. And uh, yes, we have a vaccination rate of around 80%, and we do love using masks and um, hygiene issues, but I really don't think that is only covering uh, this low number of deaths. There should be some kind of reasons, but we haven't figured out why. So I have introduced a high average life expectancy and low COVID-19 death. So maybe a lot of people may think our primary care system in Japan is great, but the answer from a Jap as a Jap uh, sorry the answer from me as a Japanese physician is thing that's not that simple. Now I'll tell you why. So as a definition of a primary care, uh, there should be a lot of. Uh, um, definitions all over the world by a picked up one uh, famous uh, definition uh, quoted by a primary care uh, article. So it is a provision of integrated accessibility healthcare services by clinicians who are accountable addressing large majority of personal healthcare and developing a sustained partnership with patient. So there are a lot of keywords uh, when we define the primary care, integrated accessibility, accountable, and uh, also the sustained partnership. The question is whether our country, Japan, is providing a great primary care or not. 
So this is a character of the primary health care in Japan. So national health care system means that uh, the insurance is not a really big issue in our country. Uh, every single people in Japan can basically get the equal uh, quality of care in Japan. And the uh, insurance, it, it's, it's not going to depend on how much you have money or what kind of insurance you have. And also it's famous for a specialization of care. But the flip side is that we do not have enough general internal medicine doctor or family physicians who are supposed to be the background backbone of the primary health care. And one of the reasons is that uh, there is no restriction of a physician number in each department. For, for example, like in the United States, when you want to become a specialist, such as cardiologist, it's going to be really competitive because the number of the physicians are limited. But in Japan, there is no restriction, no limitation of the number. So if you really want to be a specialist, you just have to raise your hand and say, hey, I want to be a cardiologist. And there are there is a test, but it's not so difficult. So this is actually making some kind of uh, diff uh, problem with the proportion of generous and specialist. In terms of accessibility, uh, we have a very uh, we have a free access to healthcare. You can visit clinic, hospital, wherever you want. It really doesn't matter who the primary care physician is, and the ambulance is free. It sounds like a great service, but unfortunately, this is causing a lot of problem. And when you want to become a primary care physician, you're gonna go and you are going to open a clinic, but there's no required certificate regulation rules to open a clinic. So even though you're not a trained family physician or you're not an internist, you still can open your clinic and act as a primary care physician. So um, there are a great doctors who are great uh, family physicians like um, Dr. Maeda, who's gonna be the next presenter, but uh, not every single physician are really well-trained in family physician or internal medicine, but still can act as a primary care physician and open a clinic. And uh, patients themselves do not know who are really specific, uh, specialized in these kind of field. So this is a good side of a primary health care in Japan. As I mentioned, fairly equal quality of medicine care can be provided and the accessibility is high uh, to each medical care. I would say it's too high, which is causing a problem. And then uh, access to medical cost is also good, but uh, if, the, if you carry a lot of family members who are elderly and have multiple comorbidities, still can be a, a financial burden. The specialty care is really good, but the flip side is that uh, we do not have enough generalists like family physicians, internists, uh, and also hospitalists who take care of the patients when they're hospitalized. Uh, because of that, uh, the care to the patients are not integrated enough, So, uh, which means the care can be fragmented because a patient can visit any kind of institutions and can have multiple doctors, which can result in a polymedicine, polypharmacy. And because we do not have any specific primary care physician who can take care of the patient directly on the like a very detailed discussion such as advanced care planning is really lacking in our country. So we are working on it. I said there is a specialized care uh, in Japan, but in terms of hospital medicine, general internal medicine and geriatric medicine, uh, these kind of field are not specialized yet. So this is something we have to work on or we're gonna have a lot of issues, which I will discuss in the next slide. So please look at the slide of the, this is um, showing the length of hospital stay in Japan. So as you can see, Japan has a very high, uh, a very long hospital stay uh, compared to the other countries. And this is due to a lot of issues. Um, hospital medicine is not established. There's a lot of specialists who have to take care of the elders who have multi-comorbidities, but they're not so well trained for that. So these kind of results are actually causing a problem. Uh, when, when it comes to CAT scan and also MRI, I think we're using too much of these technology and unfortunately unnecessarily tests are also done. And this is also a result of in, um, less integrated care. So here are the imminent problem in Japan, super age society, social distance and poverty. So as I mentioned, uh, elderly people are living long, but it does not necessarily mean uh, they're healthy till the end of their life. We have some issues. So here, uh, as you can see, 10 years of unhealthy life expectancy are noted. So these are the elderly we have to focus on. So as you know, uh, when, when they get old, they can get frail, they can result in geriatric failure to thrive. 
So there are a lot of people uh, who are coming to the hospital with uh, multiple reasons, but basically all these diseases are related to their uh, um, age frailty. So uh, great physicians, primary care physicians, um, geriatrics are necessary to treat the patient comprehensively. And once they get admitted, um, they're gonna have a lot of issues, including hazard of hospitalization. So the hospital medicine is also crucial in Japan, but unfortunately, hospital medicine, hospitalists are not adequately, adequately um, established in our country. So this is something else we have to focus on. So please look at the picture. The two left pictures are a very famous cartoon in Japan. It's called Sazae-san and Chibi Maruko-chan. So as you can see, three generations are living in the same house and the same as the right picture. This is a famous uh, movie called Sancho no Yuhi. Uh, it's showing the uh, days like 50 years ago. Uh, there are a lot of people living in the same house, but now unfortunately things are changing. So we have social distance um, even before the COVID-19 era. The left picture is showing the hikikomori, a very young generation and even a mid-age generation are having trouble um, getting outside and talking with other people because of a stress and because of difficulty in adjusting to the society. Um, and when they get old, unfortunately, as I shown in the previous slide, um, we're not living together any longer. So a lot of people are living only by their parents or by, by their, only with their kids. And when they get old, um, the elderly people are taking care of each other. And unfortunately, if one of them have passed away, uh, one of them have to live together, to live alone, and which is be becoming a very big social problem. And as a care, uh, as a physician, I think these populations have a high risk of you know, receiving inadequate care. Poverty, I think um, Japanese are considered as a rich people, but Basically, it's not true. Un un unemployment rate is 2.9%, which is relatively low, but because of the low salary and then also a, a social burden because of a lot of things, there are a lot of uh, family, the two of the people so have to, to work. you need to sum up now. You need to sum up now. Okay, I'm almost done. Thank you. So demography, uh, kill ch uh, children are going down, so we have to take care of uh, elderly patients with a limited number. So for the solution, um, I think we have to establish a general internal medicine again, uh, including family medicine, hospital care, introduction of nurse practitioner services also considered. And then we really have to regulate the primary care service. We have to increase the number of the primary care physicians and integrated care should be done for these kind of, uh, for our society. So this is my last slide. Um, despite the COVID-19 era and drastic change in medicine, Primary care health, uh, primary health care is going to be the uh, maintained as an important part in the medicine. And so uh, as a leading country of um, um, elderly population and social distance, we have to try to focus on this issue. And hopefully we can show something to the rest of the country who are also going to become a separate society in the near future. So uh, thank you for this opportunity again. Um, it was a pleasure to um, do a pre presentation here. Thank you very much.